Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to OLC TV for some more Mandate of Heaven DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms Perfect Start series as Liu Hong, the Inconstant Emperor. So, yeah, Liu Hong uh, is given a starting situation very hard, which when you look at this map and you see pretty much everyone apart from the Jang brothers are friendly with you, is surprising. And when you start the game as well, you see you have a war chest of 100,000 gold. So how can this be very hard? Well, I'll tell you. It's very hard because you are paying the upkeep of pretty much everyone else. You may have a lot of income coming in, but your outgoings outstrip that income hugely so you will be bled dry from the beginning um, you have corruption through the roof you have fighting in your court and playing your court against each other is one of the ways uh, you need to play this game because your military your your eunuchs everyone else that are fighting and this is causing corruption and you need to readdress the balance of power because right now the eunuchs control the court you need to readdress that without causing a civil war it's a very, very tough political gameplay. Unlike the other people who, like Tao Tao and Sun Jian, you're sort of conquering the south and building up, Liu Bei, who's waging war against Yellow Turbans, you will be waging war, but most of the fighting is actually going to be done within your own courtroom. Now, to help you, you have these noteworthy characters. Kong Rong and Yuan Shao, you should know from the game anyway. Don't rely on them. They both have events where they will leave you after a certain number of turns or when certain objectives have been met. So expect them to leave you, but whilst they are with you, we know that they're pretty good. Kong Rong, as a strategist and as a minister, will give you certainly bonuses towards trade and the like. Yuan Shao's not a bad commander, but the person who is loyal to you is He Jin. He Jin is Empress He's brother, uh, your wife's brother. Um, and in this game, he's a pretty solid sentinel. Um, historically speaking, perhaps wasn't quite as good as this game makes him out to be, but, you know, um, <laughs> Liu Hong needs someone talented, otherwise he would collapse very quickly. So you have He Jin. Now, He Jin has an extremely potent army. You have the Imperial Army um, from the get-go, the highest tier units, but their replenishment rate is crushingly slow. So you can't afford really to lose troops. Um, as we spoke about before, your faction specialization is political influence, which is affected by developing administration buildings, annexing factions, and releasing characters from court. And this forces you to do a lot of uh, political reformation in your capital to make sure that if you look here, your imperial court is balanced. You don't want your eunuchs in control because that ups corruption. You don't want it to be too po powerful towards the military because then you have a, a military dictatorship, essentially. Um, you need a balance to get the best uh, results for your empire, and that's a very tough thing to do. Um, you can sort things out by rewarding officials, by encouraging people to leave your court, lots of different things, which we'll get into in the game. Anyway. Enough of this. Let's start. Sihai之内,由严风起,皆云天数有变,汉作一中。张氏兄弟,皆干而起,亦在诸灭无道昏君,推翻汉王朝。雄心也望如燎原之火一心难灭终至欲壑难填试问天下有谁能抵挡权柄的诱惑呢宦官们对汉室倾颓视而不见天下人无不设法为己身谋取利益皇后和宦官们争权夺利作乱朝政战火已是一触即发
不知要流尽多少鲜血，才能使天下重归一统。陛下，你乃当今大汉天子，然如今四海之内，叛乱风起。民情未查，乃有此乱。妖贼造言惑众，哄骗良人，乃至幽计大乱。朕当速速出兵勘乱。大汉天威，谁敢不从？朕当广开言路，问询资议。传政令于万民，诚如陛下所言。臣自当勤勉不懈，以息天下之乱。皇后贤良淑德，是您的贤内助。兼之有大将军何进兴兵讨逆，暴民和叛党必将一败涂地。此言不虚，幽计贼人以区区之众，赢天下百万之师。早晚休矣！你乃是天命所归，然而却有作乱为祸之徒，妄称天命，企图颠覆汉室，千万别让他们得逞。Okay, and here we are. And the first thing you will notice before reading any of this is we are losing a ton of money per turn and food as well. Now we can deal with all of this, but it's going to take time, and we're going to lose a chunk of money until we can sort that out. One of the primary reasons why we are losing so much money is because our bureaucratic influence is far too high. Look at this: trade agreements provided minus five, plus two hundred fifty percent construction cost, plus three construction time. Plus 125 recruitment cost, but the only benefit we get is 125% character experience. It's shocking. This needs to be dealt with. Our dynasty influence, which is the support for the uh, dynasty itself, is relatively low as well. So we only have one army, one assignment uh, slot, and one rank for new generals. This is a problem, and our warlord influence is. Almost zero, so we have zero effects. We need to build up political influence to sort this out, and I will show how to do that in a second. First of all, the Emperor under heaven, the passage of the seasons, the blessing bestowed by the heavens, the trying times of hardship, all come and go. The Han endures as it always has, as it forever will. You are a leader of many, appointed by divine right, but human desires are not always noble. There are those who covered that which is rightfully yours, both within and the Empire and without. So long united must divide. As are the opening lines of *Romance of the Three Kingdoms*, thus it has ever been. The Imperial Army delivers justice to the wicked. It is a bold or foolish bandit who thinks they can disregard the law of the Empire so close to the capital. Whatever the vice, it matters not. The end result is the same. The Imperial Army has the wind behind its back, and it sails down the Yellow River. Deliver justice to those who would oppose you, and we will beat up Bu Xiang, who is our standard wailing target, unless he's a yellow turban, in which case he's called Huang Ji.、Um, And we will get plus eighty political influence. Now, plus eighty political influence is precisely what you need to remove someone from office. So this is nothing to be sneered at. Now, before we do that, let's have a quick look at this. We have a herdsman, and we have a guard. Well, neither of them are hugely impressive. It has to be said.、Um, In the short term, I think he can do with having a、uh, herdsman, just because it will give us some formations to work with.、Um, Stone pig can go elsewhere. Frankly, it's not going to suit him. Now, this army, you can see, it is at half strength, but my God, is it powerful! But see this: minus twenty-two basic replenishment rate. It takes forever to replenish. You want to fight all the battles with this army until you have solved any replenishment problems. Now, replenishing these top-tier units always takes a long time. So it's not going to get that much better, but certainly when you have food and everything else, you will have troops going back into the army. Let's get into this fight. Right, like I said, we want to fight it because we don't want to lose too many men. So I will see you in the battle. Okay, here we are. Now this should be relatively simple.、Um, he has some pretty mediocre militia units. Um, who are probably going to die to my archers before anything else?、Um, I'm going to throw my、uh, swordsman here-ish. It's not quite enough for them, unfortunately,、uh, to get a decent line in front. But it's it's still a line. 
Um, I'm gonna have a couple of spear walls here just to block anyone charging on the flanks. And by anyone, I mean their sole officer. Um, and that should do the trick. Archers behind. The big man Herjin there, he has an axe that is only worthy of chopping logs, so don't expect him to do any killing. My captains will be in reserve to move anywhere that's needed, though that's probably unlikely. Decent split of cavalry wings either side, uh, with the uh, melee cav, the shock cav, and the archer cav. So, let's get this thing up and running. He's going to come down here. Um, he could probably do a chunk of damage to me, so I'm not going to wish to duel him at all. You boys over here, over here. Uh, you lads here, you chaps can rock up up here. That way we'll be able to get as many missiles as we possibly can shooting at them. If they're stupid enough to go for my cavalry, they're going to die horribly. That's fine, they can discover them as much as they like. Yeah, the arrows are going in now. They're going to suffer. Lots and lots of arrows. And they're already beginning to flee. As soon as they look like they're going to flee, we're going to send the shot cav to chase. One step shot cav here, one step shot cav here. Well, we'll see if they actually make it anywhere. Doesn't seem like they will. Um, he looks like he's running back right you boys can uh, hang there there we go they're running they are unlikely to make it out alive as well where is their man where is he hiding let's go hunt him down he is there he is, there he is. There he is, right. In which case, shot cav out, melee cav in, other melee cav. Uh, you can get into that fight as well, please. And that should deal with this chap, because, well, there's just one of him now. We've killed literally everyone else. Uh, he has unfortunately killed five of my men. Yeah, he's doing an all right account of himself, actually. It's a real shame. 22, yeah, he's killed seven. Hmm. Well, he's gonna start to flee in a second. As soon as he starts to flee, we've got him. There he goes, run away. Chase him down for the temerity of actually killing some of our men. You two, shot cav. Let's get rid of him. Speed this thing up. 10k may not happen may not happen uh, well actually the cavalry's done a really good job there there we go and I'm going to take the replenishment because Replenishment is super slow for these chaps, so the more replenishment I can get, the better. I don't really need 90, it's not going to help me that much. So the Imperial Army delivers justice to the wicked and we've got our 80 political influence. Fantastic. The hand distributes food to the starving people. Your ministers make mention of food shortages in the capital. They play down the situation and reassure you that it is but a temporary issue with which you need not worry. Their failure to deal with the situation makes you look weak for it is you the people look to for heaven's blessings. So we need to have at least five food and this will give us 15% income from peasantry. Uh, and the Emperor the Emperor invests in enterprising trade ventures. This port was vital in receiving trade to the capital from the, across the Empire. May it commence flow down the Yellow River to you and your people once more. So we need to take Luoyang Trade Port and we will get support from the people, which is public order and faction support. So, in you go. Let's get that right now. It's going to cost us 4,000. We get 50 faction support. Let's do it. Right. We've got support from the people. Fantastic. The Emperor eliminates the rebels. Famine, unrest, destruction. These are no minor issues. Only a foolish leader would dismiss such affairs as, of the state as beneath, beneath them. So perhaps the ministers of the court are in need of some motivation. We will gain a warblade for Liu Hong, which is um, 
Probably going to go to Hojin because I don't have any good weapons for him. And we need to own an entirety of one commandery. I currently have zero. Now, we need to deal with some of our problems for the rest of this turn. There's going to be a chunk of administration. So, clear all of this. It's fascinating as it is. Don't worry about building anything. It's not going to be hugely useful. I just want you to take note of something here. We have zero zero trade partners and no chance of getting any trade partners right now we need to solve that so we can start to get some income one of the things we can start to do is have a look at the court now in the court you'll notice we have these symbols here it's here see this means the character cannot be deployed so this applies to the emperor and to eunuchs and to the empress we also see these symbols here now these symbols relate to the factions so the uh, green um, background with the bloke with the hat is a uh, bureaucratic relationship the weapons are warlords and the dragon is the dynasty now as you can see there's a massive imbalance where the bureaucrats have far too much one of the things we're going to do is chuck this guy and throw in someone who supports us and that person well who supports at least a different faction and that person is her Jin. so you have a choice here to remove from office or release from service. Removing from office uh, will cost you satisfaction and uh, plus five corruption faction wide. This will just get rid of the fellow. He's costing 977 per turn. That's a huge amount of money for this chap. So ask him to bugger off and then bring in her Jin into this position because her Jin will give you plus three warlords influence, um, bonus experience for units, plus three satisfaction and you get the same um, income from peasantry faction wide that you got from the last chap so bring him in yes he costs a chunk more money but it's a better option we also have two options here minister herald and minister of the imperial clan and again we want to put people in who are going to benefit these other positions here um, notice this as well because we've put her gin into this we already have plus five percent income from all sources and plus two replenishment which is really useful now, Minister of the Imperial Clan, um, so uh, reporting on the conduct of the Imperial family, I think we can give this to Empress Her because she is a member of the Imperial family. So in she goes and she gives us plus one assignment um, and plus three dynasty influence, which is quite nice. And Minister Herald over here um, is uh, in charge of receiving dignitaries and state guests and all the rest and we're going to give that to Yuan Shao. Why Yuan Shao when I said that he will leave you at a later date? Well simply because he's the only person in this who is not related in any way to the uh, bureaucratic faction. So in he goes and we get plus two warlords influence. There we go warlords influence is now up to 13 so not bad at all. We also need an administrator for Luo Yang. Now, if we have a look, we have a lot of uh, eunuchs who are going to support the uh, bureaucratic faction, which is a problem, but it's better to sort Luo Yang out straight away. Now, if we have a quick scan down here, you can see all of their different skills. Now, something like this, where you've got 40% income, uh, income from commerce isn't a bad thing. Um, public order isn't necessary, 10% corruption is not something you want, but they're not wonderful. I mean, some of them are not bad, but they're not hugely wonderful. Um, for me, I would personally look at something that provides uh, food production um, or, you know, uh, something that's going to really uh, boost the income okay so for me i look at this chap and i think he's not bad plus five food production we're losing five food production right now reduction in construction costs when we know that the bureaucratic influence is causing that to rise i would throw him in there so i'm going to put him into loyang there we go now it says one out of five we can't unfortunately do any more because we only have the one commandery so now that's been done let's leave that You'll notice that um, we're starting to deal with the monetary problem. We're still losing money, but uh, it's, it's, it's getting a tiny bit better. More importantly, however, this has gone down to minus two. That's not bad at all. Now, you'll be wondering why I'm not looking at building anything here. I just want to show you something. Look at the cost of this and look how many turns. Any of these, like this, for example, or this, look how many turns it's going to take and the increased cost. So I'm not going to rush to um, 
throw stuff into uh, building right at this moment in time. I'm not going to. We still don't have anything here because all that will kick off next turn. But one of the things we could do, um, if we look, where is... Uh, like, there's a huge selection of people here we can work with, but the Han Empire down here... We can start to negotiate with them for things like food. So if we were going to have, let's say, seven food, yes, that's a chunk, but we could throw in anything, spare ancillaries we have here just to help things out, um, to encourage them across. Do I need the guard? I probably don't need the guard. There we go. Do that. That's going to give us food. It's going to clear that we still manage to keep a chunk of our money and we have the plus five food. Of course, if you want to use money to do it, then use money to do it. I just happen to have some duff ancillaries. And finally, assignments. Now, we want to look for Liu Hong. He's somewhere down here. Liu Hong has a cool, um, specific assignment, which is rewarding officials. So it does reduce public order, but that's all right. We'll be able to handle that. And it does reduce food production, which is frustrating. But um, we've just bought a load of food uh, for 10 turns. We're going to be all right. We're going to go down to zero, which is much better than we were at. So we're going to pop this in here because it's going to give us political influence. 15 turns of political influence That's 150. That allows us to remove one other person and have almost enough to remove another. So we're going to throw him in and do that. Now, we can also do another assignment here. And um, what you could do is either choose for supervising construction so you can start to build things more quickly or go for agricultural exploitation, which will improve food production. It's up to you. Now, our food production here is not wonderful, but we could throw more in. And for example, something like this will plus five, 50% uh, food production, plus four food production faction wide, isn't a bad option. Personally, I would go for this. Um, and there's a chap down here, here he is, Sun Jiang, who has it, who is unhappy with you. So give him something to do, and it'll keep him happy and keep everything sorted. That will then help us mitigate uh, the assignment of uh, Liu Hong in there. So we should still end up with a little bit of a benefit in our food at the end of it. Now, uh, other things you could potentially do here is buy some more food off other people. I'm not going to. I don't think it's worth it straight away. So I'm going to hold off for now and I will see you in the second turn. Turn two is a nice, simple, administrative one. Um, you actually just declared war on looters, which doesn't really bother us in the slightest. We'll clear all of this. Now, first thing we want to do is shift this chap down the river because we want to move him near here because we want to com complete our uh, conquery of this commandery of Luoyang. So he's going to move there so the next turn he can get right up in their face. Another thing we're going to do is have a look at our reforms. And because we have land, because we currently have no trade agreements whatsoever, we're going to need to sort out a trade agreement. So hopefully this will help us. And there we go, close that. Check out what we can do here. Yes, one trade agreement. So we're gonna have a look here. And what we wanna do is find someone who's got a unique resource that's also gonna give us a chunk of cash. So we look down to someone who potentially has uh, Jade would be a very nice one. Um, who has Jade? It's Chu Gong, right? Will Chu Gong trade with us? Chu Gong will trade with us, and that's not a bad chunk of cash. So. Sort this out. That's not a bad amount. I think you could also um, pay me a little bit for this as well. Um, and it's your choice whether you want to go for payment in food or in money. I am going to request money. He doesn't have a huge amount, unfortunately. But every little helps right now. Of course, if he starts to shoot down that fast, you might want to have a look at different ways you can do it. Uh, wrong one. Uh, request regular payments? No, he really can't afford to pay me regularly, unfortunately. Still, this isn't a bad chunk of cash. We'll take that. That will work very, very nicely. Thank you very much for that. And there we go. That really is it for this turn. But you will see this is starting to tick down. 
As soon as this gets to zero, we start to get back in the black. See you for turn three. Okay, the Jung brothers. You hear rumours of three brothers of the Jung family from Julu County who have been gathering many followers to their side. It is said that one day while gathering herbs, one of the brothers was visited by an old man who handed them a book of three volumes, the essential arts of great peace. It was said that whoever held this book would be able to bring peace to all mankind. The group have begun calling themselves the Yellow Turbans due to the scarves they wear. Follow the story. So these people will be part of our problem because they're going to do some serious damage up here right on our doorstep. We will need to pay attention to them. Have a look at this. We are now down to 5,000. It's not bad at all. Not bad at all. So this is starting to uh, build up quite nicely. Our replenishment is still absolutely appalling. So what we're going to do is not worry about replenishing. We're going to move the army in here at full tilt just to get in position so that next time we can attack, um, which will be quite nice. We're going to have a quick look at the court and see if there is any candidates. No, there are no candidates, unfortunately. And again, we do not have sufficient uh, political influence to remove any of these people. But what we are looking to do here is removing one of these chaps along this line here and replacing them with either um, this chap here, this chap here, or this chap here, depending on who we want to balance out towards, uh, because they will give us the uh, best benefits for the factions that are slightly stagnant right now, and they'll knock more influence off the bureaucrats. OK, so that is what we're going to aim to do over time. Now, it is also worth noting if there are people that you want to leave. And I'm showing this now um, because, for example, we know we need to reduce the bureaucratic influence. And I know I want to replace people along this line here. So say, for example, I want Chen Dan to leave. What I can do is request aid from him and continually request aid from him. He will pay me money, his satisfaction will dip and dip and dip until he walks away. So bear that in mind. If you're in real difficulty, keep knocking on that door and you will get rid of people. I'm not going to do it um, for this. I'm just going to explain to you how it's done. I'm not going to do it because I don't think you need to. Um, I think it's a little bit gamey. Um, but it can get you out of a hole. If, if you need to, use it. Um, but don't take the piss with it. It's basically what I'm saying. Right. Again, that's it for this turn. You're just moving people into position. I'll see you next time. Okay, turn four. And we have some character development. So here's a selection of people here. And we can hire whoever we want. So Joe Tai especially. I mean, he, he's, a, he's a player. And uh, Chen Gong in there. So let's have a quick look at the candidates. Oh, Chen Gong is a warlord supporter. Zhou Tai is a dynasty supporter. That is useful. We are definitely going to want to hire these chaps. So let's bring them in because they will help balance things out. Ji Ling, uh, probably not, I'm afraid. Probably not. We still can't do anything here um, because we have insufficient political influence, but we'll be able to solve that relatively soon. So don't worry too much about that. Book of Changes, quite useful. We can give that out to people who are deserving of such a book. But before anything else, what we want to do is take this lumberyard. So, this is expected to be a decisive victory. They have a catapult, they have a lot of cavalry. This is going to be a little bit of a fight. I will see you in it. Okay, and here we are preparing for the battle. So, like I said, this is going to be a little bit of a fight. We have infinitely better troops. We unfortunately have no uh, artillery to speak of, no fire arrows to speak of. This is not an ideal army for attacking this type of position. So we're going to have to do the best we possibly can and try and lose the minimal number of men because replenishment, as I have stated before, is a massive, massive problem. How are we going to do that? Well, fortunately, we have blokes with very large shields, so they are hopefully not going to have too much of a problem dealing with the arrows. These chaps as well. Um, can prepare to advance over here. You can support them over here as well. Um, now I am going to drop my cavalry over this side. Uh, why am I doing that? Well, simply because it'll spread out their defenses, which will allow me to punch through more quickly. 
Uh, also, if they do start to pull people away and I think my cavalry can charge through, then I'm going to tell my cavalry to charge through. Now, I would like some archers to support here, and I would like some archers to support here. The spears, or glaives, are just going to hang around and go where they are needed, because they have no shields. Right. So, you boys, up you go. You go with them. And you chaps can uh, creep forward. Just a touch. The range is pretty impressive on these things. Yes, as I thought, they have that irritating thing there. Difficult. I can't actually see if they have, because I don't have the vision on them. There we go. Now we can see them. Now we can see them. Right. Pop this. Yeah, we're going to lose men. It is what it is. Not much I can do about that, I'm afraid. Go on. Arrows into this. Stand there. Except they're going to be shooting at you. Crossbow bolts going in. They're going to take a lot of damage just from these crossbows. My crossbows are insanely good. I think it's time to pop this. In you go. Let's break that up. Then I'm going to want some glaives to follow. Right, everyone else here is moving. How are you doing? You're doing good. Right. Arrows at that one, please. That leaves this looking... potentially open? What's the range on you? 250. Wow, that range is insane. Right, let's have a quick look. Let's have a quick look. They can't have that much infantry. Right, you boys are up there. You're moving over there. I think you boys can also move up here just to support. You've managed to go in. I think you can break rank and charge into this position, please. You are absolutely tearing into them, which is wonderful. But if you could tear into that, it would be more wonderful. Yeah, they do not seem to have anybody there. So, one, two. I think. Up on this hill, please, boys. Right, we're pushing them into oblivion. That's good. We're still going to take some casualties there advancing. But, uh... Better to take casualties advancing and take the land than nothing else. You boys, get in there. Just, just march. They're going to hit that shield wall and they did nothing. They did nothing. Hujin, I need you to come back here. You're far too far ahead right now. Back you come, back you come, back you come. Boys, get stuck in. Right, how are we doing? Cavalry into position. Good. Charge. You lads, how are you feeling? You feeling confident? Because you're going to come all the way in here. Right, you boys. Push up here. Hudge in. Like I said, get out, get out, get out, get out. Come on. Ride, ride, ride. That's fine. As long as he gets out alive, we don't mind. Right, you guys advance up. You guys can also advance up. Well, if they think that shield wall is going to hold, they're going to be in real shock. That's light infantry as well. They just don't stand a chance. Um, go on, you charge into them. Melee. In you come. Archers. In you come. There we go. Absolutely smashed into them. Come on, charge, charge, charge. You boys. Form up over here. Oh, that charge is missed, unfortunately. And it crashed into my... Right, this way. Melee Cav, if you wouldn't mind. Hujin, stay. Yeah, stay there. You'll do the job. You lads. 
You're going to have to get in here. They're going to die over there. My cab's going to sweep round. Yes, unfortunately, we have lost a few men, but uh, that's how this was always going to go, unfortunately. They simply had too many cavalry and they're behind the walls and this army is not designed for this type of killing. That Sabre Cav is also going to lose out. Uh, yeah, advance over here. Archers in, please. There we go. Good job. Pop this just to support. More people charging into there. Lots of arrows coming in. Yeah, they're going to flee. They're going to flee before my men, because even though my men are seriously knackered now, they will still hold, even with that, because they are the Imperial Cavalry. So, in we go. In we go. In fact, there you can see it. My men are holding, but Hojin is fleeing. Tis to be expected. As long as he doesn't bloody flee too far away and get shot out by the towers, it doesn't matter. Go on, sod off over there. Look, they're all running. They're all running. Give me the victory now. There we go. We don't need to chase them down because it's a siege. Fantastic. Not bad. Bloody, but not bad. It is what it is. There we go, we lost 600 men. They will be hard to replace. We can occupy it. And this has given us a war blade. Fantastic. Right, faction destroyed looters. And having dispensed justice, the emperor returns to the capital. The immediate threat is dealt with and it is time to call your troops to the capital. Let the people welcome you as a hero and fill the streets with celebrations in your honor. Move Her Jin to uh, Luoyang City and we will get Master of Defense. That's not bad. Not bad at all. Character developments. Um, we have recruited these chaps. Uh, there are some other people here. Maojie is not a bad one as well. It should be noted. Ancillaries. We have the Warblade. So, first of all, Hojin. Here's a Warblade. You might become more useful because of that, which would be quite nice. We have... Uh, here we go. Kong Rong has leveled up. Um... Mm. He's not really doing any of this stuff. We're going to throw him over there. I'm not going to give him any really nice things because, like I said, he will leave us eventually. Uh, we can hold everything here. We still have, as you can see, only one trade partner. Now, the reason why that is is because we're still suffering from this uh, trade agreements provided debuff because of the uh, eunuchs holding all the power here. And unfortunately, we are just a tiny bit, just a tiny bit away from being able to uh, replace someone. So as soon as we hit 80, one of those chaps is going to disappear. Now, you do get um, your uh, political influence from these buildings. You see here, so Secretariat of the Commandery gives you a benefit. Um, so if when you... Uh, have the chance if you can upgrade these you'll get increased political influence all the time now unfortunately we are going to need something in one of these it's just taking too long to sort this stuff out so whack one of those in yes it's going to cost money yes it's going to make uh, take time but we do need to look at our economy long term anyway i will see you in the next turn Turn five and we kick off with graffiti. As you walk through a local village, you see three men in the town. They are tied to blocks as headsmen stand above them. Their crime was spreading graffiti, promoting the yellow turbans around the village. Things seem to be getting out of hand with these yellow turbans. Well, I'm not sure why we're doing any walking. We should be carried in a sedan chair. We are the emperor. Baron Shao has leveled up. Uh, give him whatever you feel is necessary. Um, because, uh, like I said, he will also be leaving. The other people who are in our court, they perhaps could do with some better things, frankly. So make sure they get a slightly better deal. Uh, Sun Jiang, anything that we could use to help? Not, not hugely, not hugely. Um, you're a eunuch, so, you know, there isn't a huge amount there. We did have the mission to move him to Luoyang, so that's precisely what we're going to do with him. There we go. Having dispensed justice, the Emperor returns to the capital. This gives us plus 40 bonus experience points for units. 
and Ho Jin is there. Fantastic. The Emperor reforms the Warlords. The Warlords are far more predictable than the eunuchs and less likely to cover your throne than, than your own family. Military might is needed to maintain order in this turmoil, so we need to have at least 30 Warlords influence. and It'll give us plus 10,000. Emperor reforms his dynasty. The infighting between the eunuchs and the warlords has crippled the empire. For too long you have suffered their poison words. Put an end to their ambitions and how will we be better for it? Have 40 tenants influence and the treasury will be rewarded. So, how do we deal with all of that? Well, we have to start kicking people out here. And as you can see, we can begin that right now. So we're going to say to this chap, thank you very much for your service. You have been borderline useless. Uh, Bye bye, and we're going to promote this chap to this position because it's going to increase the warlord's influence. This leaves this option open here, which we can then say, well, we have hired these chaps down here. So who do we want to benefit most from this? Do we want the dynasty influence or do we want the warlord influence? Well, really is up to you how you want to uh, do this. For me, I think plus two dynasty influence isn't a bad option, actually, as opposed to plus one warlord influence. Uh, warlord influence, is that going to increase over the allotted amount? No. So, yeah, here we go. Throw you in there. Fantastic. All sorted out. There we go. 16. Not bad. Not bad at all. Everything's looking pretty good there. And then, has that changed anything for our uh, diplomacy? Yes, it has. We can have a trade agreement. Now, one of the options for a trade agreement, which I didn't take first, but you should definitely take now, is with the Han Empire. They have all of this unique stuff here, and you can negotiate quite a lot out of them. They have lots and lots of things, food, ancillaries, the like. So, ooh, all of his ancillaries have gone. He's just got stone pigs. Well, last time he had ancillaries anyway. Um, but you can request payment from them for this type of thing. Uh, request food if you haven't already started trading food with them. Doesn't really matter. Um, I'm going to ask for just hard up cash because that's what I want from them right at this moment in time. Um, time it too much. There we go. That will do. 500. There we go, and the Han Empire is never going to declare war on us anyway, because they're uh, part of our lot, and we've managed to get our losses down to 4,287, which isn't bad at all. This 5% uh, income from all sources is super useful. And over here, we're starting to build up towards the having the ability to um, make new armies. So yeah, it's all looking pretty rosy, and we're already only on turn five. So yeah, anyway. I'll see you in turn six. Okay, so we're starting to see people declare war on the yellow turbans and Tang Zhuo has defected. A yellow turban officer, Tang Zhuo, or Tang Zhou, because they've got the spelling mistake, has seen the error of his ways and surrendered to the emperor. He has implicated others in the plot to have been swiftly dealt the emperor's justice. It seems the yellow turbans are planning to strike against the empire. Yes, we knew this. No biggie, no worry at all. So, first thing, you'll notice the emperor has leveled up. And we have a selection of stuff that we can use to upgrade. Um, nobility is probably the best because he is the Prime Minister, Faction Heir, etc. So uh, as Faction Leader, if you give him this, you have the ability to have another assignment. Uh, which will obviously come into effect right now. Now, what you could do here is uh, mustering because that will help you create another army. You can also look for things that will help benefit just the replenishment of your troops uh, as it stands um, right now. Something like conscription, for example. Do I have anyone who can do conscription? Yes, I do. Joe Tai can do conscription. That's quite good. Plus 10% replenishment. Anybody else can do anything like that? No, it is just Joe Tai. So, yeah, I obviously had to hire him to uh, get this. If you don't have someone who has that, do oversee mustering or... Uh, something that will help generate um, food but I want to do this because I need to have these guys start to replenish at a faster rate which they will do hopefully in the not too distant future you see here we're just starting minus 20% rather than minus 22 it's not bad it's not bad this is still creeping up which is quite nice um, 
what are we on right now 30 so yeah 22 change this turn it's not bad at all again what we are looking to do is as this builds up we're looking to start replacing people who are uh powerful units with people who are um have more dynastic or warlord influence we can also start to look at hiring some of these chaps here who are going to be more in line with our needs so maojie is another high level chap but keeping him happy for the short term may be a challenge we do have the money to take a little bit of a gamble though i would also bring in uh, tufa champe because she is a dynastic supporter so we can start to ship out people and replace them straight up with warlords and dynastic supporters here which will be quite nice really quite nice indeed um, as far as uh, all of these bureaucrats here go what we want to do is have a look at um, these chaps here the uh, grand excellency of works and the grand commandant and swap them out for other supporters uh, of the warlords and uh, the da and, and the dynasty here and we'll just take them from here and just promote them up and then bring in other people here just until the whole thing balances out as you can see we still can't do that yet because we need the 80 but he's the next one for the chopping block right one more level up if we can find the person here we are about dan uh what's going to be useful Ooh, this is something like this is quite useful as well bear that in mind if uh, you can promote them to prime minister because it gives you more uh, trade agreements so we know he has it something to hold on to anyway i'll see you next turn okay turn seven and we have living in harmony so this is a random but uh, still quite nice sometimes even seemingly independent people can find friendship in like-minded souls these two driven by their own desire to achieve draw inspiration or perhaps competition from one another it gladdens you to see it but with a laugh you wonder where it can possibly end so feng fang and sun jiang excellent we have uh, some level ups as well i do like scare i really like scare it's super useful especially when you're fighting yellow turbans uh jiao jong you are the administrator so ooh, uh, doesn't help unfortunately nor does that um well we'll take that just in case just in case you're apparently the imperial mother um well that's that's interesting now reforms are important here because we can get the sino roman embassy which allows us to get another trade agreement which is going to bring us more money so we're going to jump straight into that right now trade agreement and have a look here who's going to give you a decent deal whilst also providing you with uh, a decent amount of uh, unique resources um you could potentially look for people who you can sort of squeeze for money too so if we were going to have a look at say mm, Liu Biao he has quite a lot of food so we can negotiate this deal and say you know what give me some more food uh unfortunately he only give us one food and it's going to be a little bit but you know worth a try another thing we can do is uh, just have a look at his ancillaries check him out oh, he doesn't have anything unfortunately um we'll just request flat chunks of gold anything that's going to help so do what you need to do to keep your balance just time it too much yeah that'll do the trick we don't want to upset them too much by uh squeeze them for for a zero because we're going to rely on these people to um, look after us later but do what you need to do to make money because that's where uh, we're going to either live or die by making money here other things you can do is just by chatting to these people seeing if you can trade things here and there um, military access as well is something that you could potentially sell up to you really up to you with that stuff um, but look what you can do to make money now, unfortunately, our political influence is still a little bit low and these things are still taking ages to build because they do. But we can just instant uh, construct because we have lots of money and we can do the same with this, which will all help us to no end whatsoever. As far as building goes in here, anti-corruption through this is always very useful it does also give you income from industry which will help in the long run um, if you prefer to do income from commerce because we have the trade port the uh, horse exchange here is quite a useful one as well um, for me personally i like to have the anti-corruption i always like to have the anti-corruption 
So I would go to upgrade that before I did anything else. Right, you can see we're now down to minus 4,000. That's not bad at all. Our dynastic influence is improving. Our warlord's influence is improving. And by next turn, we should now be able to uh, clear out another eunuch. And we're going to aim for him. Okay, so next turn, the first thing you're going to do is release him from service. And what you want to do is promote someone like Yuan Shao or um, Empress He because you want one of those in each of these, that is gonna to start to provide you with more trade agreements, which is gonna then put you into the green. You only need about two more trade agreements and then you'll be in the green. So basically clear these two chaps out and replace them with one more um, of the military and one more of the dynasty and you'll be fine. You wanna hang on to Kong Rong here because he does actually give you trade agreements, even though he supports the bureaucrats. Um, so hang on to him for as long as you can. He's a pretty good grand tutor. So don't worry about replacing him. Everybody else here, what you want to do is decide whether you go all in for the dynasty first or all in for the warlords. For me personally, I quite like to chuck in a little bit more with the dynasty because it will provide me with more armies. Um, and the more armies mean that I will be able to fight it out a little bit more with um, the, the enemies that will be coming, especially the yellow turbans. We do have some quite good generals as well now. Um, Zhou Tai, uh, Chen, uh, Chen Gong we've got here, Mao Jie is pretty good, but if you see anybody else and we're thinking of people like Yu Jin or Xin Yo, Xin Yu, any of those names start to show up here, any uh, uniques, pick them up. Um, so that when you can start to recruit another army, you throw them into your armies and you start to smash all over the yellow turbans. Um, as support for the bureaucrats drops, your trade agreements, everything else will increase. Your food will be affected. You need to bear that in mind. That's why we're trying to put people into positions like this guy who is gonna help us with food. And that's why we want uh, assignments where we can get food bonuses as well. So you wanna make sure those keep going, otherwise your men are gonna starve. But keep throwing stuff uh, into reducing the bureaucrats so that your money can increase. As you move on, um, through this, you're going to want to keep on recruiting people you see who are pretty good, who support the warlords or support the dynasty. Don't worry about the bureaucrats too much. It doesn't matter if they fall out into being a very much third place. It's absolutely fine. Um, you don't need to worry about the bureaucrats uh, needing to be balanced exactly with the other two, is what I'm saying. You will affect your food, but that can be dealt with other ways. You will have the money to be able to deal with it. Um, you should bear in mind that Kongrong will leave you around twenty-two, uh, around turn 22, 23. Um, so you're looking for a suitable candidate to take his place as soon as he goes out. And anyone who can basically um, give you a trade agreement will be pretty good. If not, just bear in mind, he is a plus nine support to the bureaucrats when he drops out you're gonna see this drop hugely and you'll get bonus to trade agreements anyway. So uh, losing him, yes, you lose a plus one trade agreement, but it may affect the bureaucratic influence so much that you get a huge amount of trade agreements provided afterwards. But keep them until then because you don't have uh, the ability to remove enough bureaucrats to really see the benefit until around turn 22, 23. Um, now, this fight up here, I have seen Lu Zhu get completely eaten up every time I have done this. I've never seen him survive. So you are likely going to have to throw He Jin into a lot of very dirty fighting alongside Liu Chong. Get yourself military access with Liu Chong, with Lu Zhu, with um, uh, Bian Zhang here so that your armies can support each other. You don't want to rush into the fighting straight away. You want to defend your territory as much as you can. But if an opportunity comes for you to sneak up and smack some farmland or smack a town and just capture it with minimal casualties, take it. Absolutely take it. Sit with your guys as a sort of heavy reserve. Let their armies do the big fighting. You sneak in there, take their towns after they've won the battle for you, you know? Uh, that way you'll get the food, you'll get the sacking, money, all of that type of stuff. There will be a rebellion knocking 
over here, Beigong Boyu. Now, historically, Han Sui and Ma Tung were also part of this. They are not um, in this, but I don't know whether or not that's going to be patched out. I read recently that that is going to be patched out, so they join it, because historically, they were all together. Um, so how, if, this, if you're watching this after a patch has been done, I strongly advise having some sort of agreement with these two running, uh, potentially like a food trade agreement, non-aggression packs, uh, potentially as well if they're available at that stage for those two, um, so that they don't join the uprising because they provide a lot of power to it. If not, Begon Boy usually gets crushed, usually gets crushed pretty quickly. Um, you shouldn't have to worry about it too much, though you may need a second army just around here to defend your trade ports. Now, if you are with your big army supporting up here, you should start to eat up land pretty quickly. The three brothers will amass up here and will start to sweep down and you will see Han Fu collapse, you will see Lu Zhu collapse, you will see Liu Bei, he will have Guan Yu Zhang Fei and they will start to spread out from here. Liu Yu usually gets eaten up as well, which means Gong Sun Zan becomes available to hire. If he does, hire him. Uh, around here in uh, Dong province, you start to see Huang Shao. He's not that much of a threat. He usually dies off pretty quickly. Um, but, uh, you know, just keep an eye on him because he could be a problem coming up behind you if you need to. Gong Du is not going to affect you at all. He's down in the southwest. Um, you don't need to worry about him too much. He's over near Ba somewhere. Um, but yeah, this is where you want to fight, send your army up, support the other guys who are fighting here, steal the towns from underneath them. Now, when the Mandate War kicks off, you will see your diplomacy, if we have a look at this, uh, you will see <clears throat> right now you're part of the Empire, apart from Matang and Hansui. Um, everyone's getting along pretty, pretty nicely. Uh, but, oh, here we go, attitude. Not everybody likes you that much. Everybody will like you a hell of a lot more once the Mandate War kicks off. Um, because you've got a, uh, an, an enemy that will unite the Empire against it. Also, as you just generally sort things out um, within your court, you will see that uh, your diplomatic penalties and everything else are reduced and you will get better. Um, you will need to handle further all the time so be building things like the military patrols like the confucian temples um like the uh, uh what's it grain storage stuff like that just to control your fervor because you do not want to be rushing your armies around like you would with other factions and dealing with rebellions because you can't afford to lose the men with your imperial army you just can't you just can't do it it takes too long to replenish um you should be able to clear this uh, debt so that you have about 40k um, once you replace these two and then you'll start making money again. Um, then as soon as Kong Rong goes, you'll be able to make a chunk more money as well if you put the right person in to be uh, his position. Um, and so you'll never have to really worry about money. So it's then just about what you do to win the game. The Mandate War is not going to be that tough. Um, you're, you're going to slaughter anyone you fight. You just don't want to use your men that much. So conquer where you need to conquer. Keep everyone in line and use your diplomacy to just slowly annex them and uh, bring them under direct control. And you should have it. It's a very tough start. You're going to lose a lot of money. We're about, let's say, six turns away from being absolutely in the green with lots of trade agreements. More trade agreements you have, the better you are. Buy food if you need to. Take food from the yellow turbans. Keep in mind that your west may be threatened, so you want to raise just a small army just to defend there. But otherwise, you should be absolutely fine. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have, please feel free to leave a like and subscribe. We are going through all of the possible starts for Mandate of Heaven. And uh, I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye-bye.